Hi, I'm Mark Stevens, author of Adventures in Legal Land. My website is adventuresinlegalland.com. And this is Beating Civil Traffic Tickets Part 3, The Impossibility of a Fair Trial. Well, but I do have to warn you first, there is some government propaganda here that we're going to have to go through. That's one of the ways of showing that you cannot get a fair trial, though. See, those who are looking to steal your money, the guys who are doing business as a government, mainly, I say, a traffic court in this case, uh, desperately want you to believe that you can get a fair trial. They even tell you that if you ask them. And I have things in here that says, an independent and honorable judiciary is indispensable to justice in our society. There is also a judge shall perform judicial duties without bias or prejudice. That's, of course, in the canons in here in Arizona. It's pretty similar no matter where you go. Yes, of course, even bureaucrats in Canada trumpet the same propaganda. Uh, quote, any person charged with an offense has the right to a fair hearing by an independent and impartial tribunal. That's the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Now, something tells me that charter doesn't include the right to be left alone. Well, you may be saying, how is that propaganda? That sounds pretty good. Uh, everyone's supposed to be entitled to a fair trial. Well, it is nothing more than propaganda or public relations to make you believe that you're entitled to a fair trial, but that's impossible for them to give. And one of the ways to show that, of course, is that there's no such thing as an independent and impartial judiciary. Very simple to prove, and that's what we'll go through today. See, the technical term is conflict of interest to show that there is a, a impermissible conflict of interest. So let's say you have a ticket and unfortunately you have to go to court. So you ask the judge a series of questions that will show that there is a conflict of interest and that a fair trial is impossible. And the first question is simple, am I entitled to a fair trial? Now, of course, most judges are going to say yes, because, of course, that's the public relations, that's the propaganda. They have to make it look good while they're stealing your money. So now the judge is locked in. He says, I'm entitled to a fair trial. So, of course, my next question would be, can I get a fair trial if there is a conflict of interest? Well, this is obvious even to us non-lawyers, and every judge that I'm aware of has always answered this question, no, that you cannot get a fair trial if there's a conflict of interest. Now, this last question I like to call the knockout question, and I call it that because it's really the only question that needs to be asked in order to prove that traffic courts are scams run by criminals. Now, the question is, and this is, of course, to the judge, who do you represent here? And, you know, that's the same as asking who the judge is acting on behalf of. I got to tell you, and you can imagine, judges just hate to answer that question. And those who think the system is valid, boy, they hate to answer this question also. Now, most judges will not answer this question, and with good reason. This one simple little question exposes their entire scam. A fair trial is impossible. And don't make the mistake of thinking that this is not a very serious issue that they, at least in their propaganda, take very seriously. I mean, look here. It says, in all trial court proceedings, a judge shall disclose on the record information that the judge believes the parties might consider relevant to the question of disqualification, even if the judge believes there is no actual basis for disqualification. But you see, most judges will not answer this simple question. Even though the law says that they shall disclose on the record the information, they will not do that. That's because they don't want their little scam to be exposed, especially the rest of the people in the courtroom, because they may grab their wallets and run out of there, as they should. See, they refuse to answer the question and tend to get a bit irritated because it's what I mentioned before. You're bringing up the fact that there is a conflict of interest showing that the a fair trial is absolutely impossible. Because you see, judges represent the state, which is the pretended plaintiff in a traffic case. Think about that for a moment. The judge is actually representing a party to the action. You still think judges are fair and independent? Well, let's look at some evidence. This is actually from a real case in the East Mesa Justice Court. This is actually one of the very few times a judge has been responsive to this simple question. You'll understand in a moment why they typically do not answer this question. Also, who do you represent here? Who do I represent? Yes. I represent the state of Arizona. Well, there you have it. A judge admitting he represents the state of Arizona, which is supposed to be a party to the action. Gee, talk about a conflict of interest. The judge is actually representing the party attacking you. Do you still think you get a fair trial from these guys? See, common sense dictates that if a judge is acting on behalf of a party, a fair trial is not possible. And that's how to prove the impossibility of a fair trial.